Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now what I've got spinning around in front of me today is a fella from the 7th Cavalry. Uh, the US Cavalry of the Old West, you know, inverted commas period, from about 1830 through to roughly 1890 off the top of my head. Now don't quote me directly on that because I have been reading quite a bit recently and the dates have all started to blur together a little bit. <laughs> but luckily they're actually quite simple to paint. Now in particular these are probably a, a range which would work quite well with uh, contrast or speed paints, but I wanted to step back and do something a little more traditional here because I like a very solid finish to cavalrymen like this. So all of the paints will be listed in the description below, same as always. Let's get started. So quickly on the subject of this fella here, he is a 3D print. He's from a company called 3D Breed and they do a wonderful range of western themed miniatures including, importantly, mounted versions like this and foot versions. And if you're playing a game which needs foot and mounted versions, winner. Now there are some very good ranges out there in metal for 7th Cavalry. In particular, the War Games Foundry have some wonderful ones, and I'll try and remember to put a link in the description, but Google will not fail you. <laughs> They're really nice miniatures out there. This fella I've just done because I had the files and uh, I wanted to paint something different. Now I've started off by priming him in Army Painter's Leather Brown from the spray can. Now for most of my Western miniatures I tend to do them from a dusty colour, something like Xandri Dust from Citadel. Uh, but this fella I figured I could cheat, and Leather Brown is going to be predominantly the colour of the horse, and as well if I miss anything, like any little corners or creases, crevices, that sort of stuff, it's not going to matter too much because it's going to be a brown colour, it will fade into the, the background, that's the shadows. Won't matter too much. I'd also recommend Fur Brown, uh, another army painter primer, if you want a slightly different looking colour to the horse. Or you could paint it, you know, actually layer over a couple of layers of acrylic and change the colour of the horse that way. But I am going to go for a brown horse, nice and simple. Now the first colour we'll apply will actually be to go all the way down to his face. And for this I'm going to start with Tanned Flesh from the Army Painter. This will cover fairly well, but once you've applied one coat, do let it dry, come back and give it a second. Just go straight over his moustache and beard if he's got one. Will not matter for later. The same as always, we're going to try and start from the lowest levels and work our way up so that we're always able to paint and tidy as we go. Now what I've got here, this is Ultramarine Blue, and this is one of the new, uh, what do you call them, the Warpaints Fanatic. I got sent a little sample of these in an order. I think quite a few people have been talking about having got this bottle of blue, and I'm going to use this to paint in the uh, cavalry blanket, which is on his horse. Now ideally these would usually have been a dark blue, quite similar to the jackets themselves, uh, but supply being what it was at the time, Quite regularly you would end up with fellas using whatever they could get their hands on. Now this lieutenant, he has got quite a nicely trimmed blanket with a little 7 on it, which I'm figuring is for 7th Cavalry. Now that is a really nice blue. <laughs> We're going to move on now. I have Demonic Yellow. Now this one can be a little bit finicky, so if you've got another yellow that you like to use more, you can stick to that. Don't worry too much about the specific colours that I'm using. What I'm going to do is lay down a coat of this along the edges of the blanket. And I'm also going to paint the stripe in his trousers with this. Now with yellows and whites and really light colours, try and apply in one go, moving your brush in the same direction, because it will help that colour settle. Now once that's dried I am going to come and give that a second coat, but around the blanket I'll try and paint the little seven I'll do that off camera because that'll be a bit easier. And I will also use this to block in the cord and the little acorns on his hat right now. Now, full disclosure, in a couple of points I did come back and give it even a third coat. It doesn't matter too much because you're not going to be doing a huge amount of trim. Just make sure that you are letting each layer dry thoroughly because the last thing you want to do is come back with wet paint paint over something which is not dried, and then lift up the colour underneath. All right, that's going to make painting yellow take a really long time. Now we're going to move on to his trousers, and for this I'm going to base coat them in wolf grey. A nice light blue. Uh, if you want to go to a lighter blue, then something like fog grey even would work quite well. 
Uh, Ice Storm, I think, is another one in that sort of range. Uh, you'll see Wolf Grey covers wonderfully, though, so it is my pick for this. Now, just while the trousers dry on the mounted fella, I'm going to do the jacket here on this dude. And for this, I'm going to use Cantor Blue. This is a nice, deep, dark blue. Uh, in reality, Union jackets and later US cavalry jackets, they were very dark, almost a bluish black. So any dark blue will really do the job here. Um, dark Prussian blue from Vallejo, for example, or, uh, or there's deep blue from the Army Painter. Uh, Cantor blue here is pretty much perfect for what I've got in mind, though. So I'm going to give him a quick blast of this. Now, before we get to painting in his leather equipment, there's one last detail on the horse itself. Uh, which we want to color in, and that is going to be the canvas color on his uh, canteen here. Now I'm using Banshee Brown, and I've <laughs> watered that down a little bit more than I should have done, uh, but any light brown, even a blue, would actually work here. Uh, it was quite common that they would color these canvas covers, uh, but whatever the case, just a quick blast of this color now. Now the cavalry gauntlets that this fella is wearing, um, they might have been any number of different colors, some officers opted for like a pristine white, but this dude I am painting as a second lieutenant. So what I'm using here is skeleton bone from the army painter. Um, you could even paint them a quite a strident yellow. Um, kids skin, all that sort of stuff. There's not a right answer here, so don't worry too much. If you haven't got this color, you can paint this any old thing that you want. Now with that, we're going to start painting in the leather details, black cloth, that sort of thing. This is probably the step which is going to take you the longest. Not because it's difficult, but because there's quite a lot of this. What I'm using, this is German Grey from Vallejo. And there's a lot of these off-black colors. Um, something like Corvus Black from Citadel is another good match for this. Now, I am using German Grey because it just covers wonderfully. And it's a slight blue-black color. So I'm going to use it to paint in the tack on the horse. I'm going to use it to paint in his belt, his hat, anything which is going to be black, more or less. Whew. And this will take a little bit of time because there is quite a lot on this guy which would be black. Now I love how every miniature has a stage where once you've done it, things really come together. And it's definitely that step for these guys. But you might notice there is one detail that I haven't actually painted and it is going to be black, and it's because I want to use a pure black for his scabbard. Now you don't necessarily have to do this, you could paint it in that same grey-black, uh, but I want it to be visibly darker, you know, almost lacquered as compared to the rest of his gear. So whichever black paint you fancy, black scabbard. Now once again, just demonstrating on the foot figure here, what I have is Retributor Armour. Any middling gold color will do fine here. I'm going to paint in his little belt buckle. Um, and I'm also going to paint in a couple of bits on his scabbard here. Um, these might have been a brassy color. And now with a little bit of Iron Hand Steel, I'm going to paint in the metal details. So pretty obviously that's going to be his sword. Uh, now one thing I want to quickly mention is that his pistol, uh, in reality these would probably have been Fairly ornate, um, you know, we're talking about blackened steel and brass fittings and what have you. But I am painting a miniature here for a very quick game. So I'm just going to blast it in metallics and just plain old silver. And if that's wrong, shh. Now there are just a couple of things left to do before we go ahead and shade them. Now what I'm turning to here, this is Grim Black, uh, one of the speed paints from the Army Painter but uh, Black Legion or Black Templar will work just as well. I'm going to use this to blast over the brown base coat and black in the hair, you know, the tail and the mane of the horse. And I'm also going to use it to paint in little sockies on his feet and hooves, or his legs and hooves, feet. I keep saying I don't know the first thing about horses, so uh, believe me when I tell you the truth there. <laughs> And then, thinking of hair, the last thing to do is the hair on the fella himself. I'm going to use Mechanica Standard Grey. And see if I can get in there with this in shot. 
Now at this stage, if you've got any last minute tidy up that needs doing, you can cruise back, grab some leather brown and touch up the horse, whatever it is that needs doing. What I'm going to use now is a little concoction I've called Marine Juice. Uh, if you've not come across it before, I'll pop the recipe in the description because repeating it all the time takes a bit of time, but it's a really useful universal wash, which is a little bit warmer than something like Agrax Earthshade uh, or Strong Tone, but not as, as stark. So I like using it on all sorts of things, and it's great on miniatures like this too. So we are going to load up a brush and start applying this over our entire horse and our rider. You'll see this goes on very easily. It's got a nice, very faint reddish tint to it. And it'll settle without staining the colors on the miniature too much. So work relatively quickly, making sure that you're not repeating, you know, you're not going over the same area over and over again. But yeah, once you have doused the entire miniature in a layer of this marine juice, go ahead and give it about half an hour to dry. Then we'll see what we have after that. I'm trying to find an angle that'll let you see his face and everything, but once that is dried, you'll have something that looks like this. Eminently playable, you can put them on the table like that, I would suggest. You've got plenty of shading, and the beautiful thing about using as much medium as this does is that it's not going to tint the, uh, the colors very much. So his trousers are still blue, his face is still much the same color as we painted. It's spot on. But we can make it look a little bit more interesting, and so we're going to go do some highlights. I'm going to start off here. This is Fog Grey. It's a wonderfully light blue from the Army Painter. And all I'm going to do is just a couple of little lines of this on the extreme creases of the folds in his trousers. Now we'll do the same thing again here with Griffin Blue on the jackets. Now I've watered this down with just a wee bit of water to aid with the flow. And you don't want to really do very much of this at all as you first start applying it. Just pop it a little bit on at extreme edges and uh, see how you feel about it. It will dull down a little bit as it dries. And you can also experiment with how much you thin it down and use it almost like a glaze uh, on flatter areas if you want to get a bit more definition in his chest. I'm not too worried about that sort of fuss for a gaming miniature, uh, but it is worth having a play with sometime. Now, I've realized it is a little bit tricky to see some of the highlights that I have done, particularly on that blue. Uh, it's worth pointing out that that little bit of a shine that's on there, that's going to come out of using the dark tone in the uh, marine juice mix from earlier. Now, the difference is when you've got it in front of you, you're not going to have these lights <laughs> glaring down on the work that you're trying to record. So you're going to see this much more clearly. As well, nothing to worry about because we are going to matte mat var varnish. We're going to matte varnish this. Now it's a little easier to see here on the foot version, so I am going to start with Cadian Flesh Tone to paint in his face. What I'm going to do is leave just a little bit of the tanned flesh in the recesses. So I am going to cover over most of his face with this again. Just watch out when you come near uh, his neck and try not to fill in his eyes. I swear the next guy I'm going to paint isn't going to have a hat, so we can see his bloody face. <laughs> uh, once you have done that though, grab yourself some Kislev flesh. What you want to paint with this is across his cheekbones, uh, the tip of his nose, and if he has got it visible, his chin is a pretty good candidate for this too. You're using this to now bulk out the shape of his face a little. Now for the black details, things like the reins and his equipment, what I've got is one of my scraggly old uh, paintbrushes. This one comes from the stationery aisle in, you know, your ordinary store. You're going to find ones like these next to ballpoint pens and all that sort of carry on. Just, you want a crap brush. But it's nice and small and it's got a flat edge. So it's actually really useful for what some of the dry brushing that we're going to do. I'm just loading up here. This is Dawnstone. Uh, now you can also do this with the layer paint version, Dawnstone Dry, you don't necessarily have to use. I just find that a little bit easier. Once you've prepped up your brush with that, let's start very carefully just flicking along the edges of some of those black details. Catch them and add a little bit more volume. 
Uh, now areas where there's other bits already painted, like the uh, silver on his buckles and what have you, don't worry too much about catching that because the gray will really not obscure much of that detail. So as far as a very, very quick way of getting a bit of visual interest to a miniature, can't beat a little careful dry brush. Now we're getting into the home stretch. We're really just polishing off some of these little details. And remember, of course, you can stop any time you like. You don't feel as though you need to follow along exactly with what I'm doing. What I have is Administratum Grey, and I am going to very carefully just flick in a little bit of this to give a bit more volume to his hair. Okay, now I'm going to grab another scraggly old brush, and I have here some Monster Brown from the Army Painter. I should probably be a little more brave and pick something lighter, uh, but I don't want to overwhelm the horse as I very quickly blast along. You'll see just some of the upper musculature to give him a bit more visual interest. So over and over the same area a few times just to build up the color, and that should be fine. Now to brighten up some of the yellow, what I'm going to use is Moon Dust from the Army Painter. Uh, it is a wonderful color. I always love having an opportunity to use it, uh, in part because it's so nice, and in part because I really like saying Moon Dust. Uh, so just along some of the edges, highlighting the creases in the trousers, the same as we did the blue. Uh, if you want to touch up the hat band, you can do that now. I would suggest you probably don't need to, uh, but you are painting your own toy soldiers, so you make that choice yourself. Now with some Liberator Gold, what I'm going to do is to brighten up, funnily enough, the gold bits, just a little along the edges of the uh, sword and what have you. You can use a side of your brush to do that quite easily. Uh, but as well what I'm going to do is, if I'm careful, uh, load up my brush with a little bit of this and paint around the rim on his rank slides to make that look a little bit more like gold thread. Now the last thing I'm going to pop on here, this is steel. Uh, this is a Vallejo model air color, but it comes perfectly well off of a brush. I'm going to use this just as a tiny bit on the edges of some of those metallic details. Uh, particularly on this pistol, if you want that to shine a little bit more, just a wee dab of this at the corners will make it absolutely glow, so be sparing with it. Uh, as well, I'll tidy up around his bit and bridle with this, make that a little bit more interesting. Every time I say that's the last step, one more idea comes to mind. <laughs> what I have here, this is Brain Matter Beige, and it is even a little bit lighter than something like Screaming Skull. What I'm going to do is use this to lighten up the edges of the water bottle. Um, I'm also going to pick just a few of the creases in his gloves to brighten those up. And I will use this to paint in our horse's teeth. So let's get that in. Um, I do love these 3D breed figures for how detailed the horses are, but without being like really crazy difficult to paint. So now at last, the final thing to do is to pop a varnish on them. I'm going to use Instar's Varnish Plus, which is pretty easy to pick up if you are in the UK. Um, other alternatives include the Vallejo uh, airbrush varnishes, you can just apply those with a brush. Uh, it's really up to you, just find a matte varnish that you like. I'm going to base them up, the recipe for that will be in the description too. Let's get a look at this fella when he's all finished. So there at last, side by side, I've got the mounted fella and the foot version both complete. And I wanted to just quickly put them up like this so that you can see that both of them were done. But since the real star of the show is the dude on horseback, let's get the spinny thing turning around. Now this is a method which is very easy to adapt to a few different things, and in particular if you've got fellas that don't have that stripe molded onto their trousers, uh, it's very easy to add a little bit of diversity to the unit by adding in some grey or even brown trousers as supply sort of runs out. You can have you guys look a little more salty and worn just by mixing up some of that. So this was a lot of fun to do, and uh, I feel like I'm painting a lot of horses recently. As you can see, it is quite simple, but there's a lot of little things to do. None of them particularly challenging by themselves, but it is a fair bit of work, just owing to, well, as much as there is. Always seems to be the way with cavalry figures. 
As always, thank you very much to Exit 23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all of my wonderful patrons who are keeping me ticking in paints and glue, including my gorgeous producers whose names are showing up on screen now. Thank you so much for all of your support. You keep me ticking. Now, any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comment box below. My Twitter and Instagram are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time, one and all, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.